All right, so Mike Peterson, he asked a, a really interesting question here. It's a loaded question. All right, I think the reason why it's in this hell review, I'd have to go check. It might be because of the word globe. I might have a ban on that word. I have a ban on the word dude. And why this? Well, I don't know why this would be uh, held re for review. That's beyond me. But anyways, um, what led you to think the globe might be a lie? Okay, so that's a loaded question. So I've been trying to keep my video short, and I can't do it. I'll try it, but I can't do it. So let's go back, uh, you know, back to, I think it was 2012, give or take. About 2012, when I finally... Uh, looked at a, a video regarding 9-11 because I uh, was working with uh, a couple of guys that, that said 9-11 was an inside job. I thought, you guys are nuts. Conspiracy nuts. And so finally, finally, after about five years probably at least, uh, I looked at a, a video of the Building 7 and I thought, wow, you know what? I can see why they would make that claim because building seven most certainly just on first glance most certainly looks like a demolition not like a natural freak a natural uh, or not a natural uh, it doesn't look like it was uh, you know uh, damaged and then fell it looks like a controlled demolition and so I you know I just looked at what controlled demolitions look like it looks exactly the same and then uh, you look at uh, other videos where uh, you know building collapses and it's not even it's night and day right so I'm thinking wow okay so maybe maybe I'm wrong you know maybe I'm wrong and so that sort of led me to sort of question uh, you know other things you know in at that time it was before you know about 2010 11 12 when I was looking at uh, Kent Hovind videos and and he really does a great job of showing how ridiculously stupid the theory of evolution is and so it just to me I thought you know what evolution is wrong maybe this thing is wrong what else is wrong what if I've been lied to you know because it really burns my butt that that uh, that I believed evolution when I was a teenager I believed I was a super monkey I did I thought I was a super monkey evolving into a super Martian really if I'm being honest that's what I believed so it burns my butt that I I fell for that so I fell for it hard and I was an absolute fool an absolute fool for believing that it I mean this thing that I saw in junior high it made a fool out of me a big fool and so it really burns my butt and then so now here I you know I'm thinking man I've been fooled again I've been fooled again with this you know idea that uh, Muslims were out to get us <laughs> I believed everything on the TV I was fooled so yeah I, I started to reflect and, and one of the reflections was uh, I think it was 2010 I was on a water tower 120 feet up in the air looking out over the horizon and realizing you know you can't see a curve but I did, kept that to myself. And then I reflected back when I was 10 years old in the fourth grade and second day of school, which was my first day of school because I missed the first day because I didn't want to go. I had so much fun during the summer. I just wasn't ready to go back to school. And to be honest with you, I hated it. And the only reason I liked school is because of other kids and recess. That's it. Anyway, so... You know, we do our Pledge of Allegiance, and 
which is another issue all by itself. But uh, the teacher asked, um, what is the shape of Earth? And I thought, here, I'm smart, man. I'm smart. I'm really smart. I'm going to raise my hand and answer that question. I'm not going to be shy anymore. I've been outgoing and crazy all summer. I'm going to be outgoing and no longer am I going to be shy. Raise my hand and then and I say, oh, it's it, you know, it's bumpy. You know, because if you look at Earth, you know, from a higher up perspective, you, you know, that it's not um, always mountainy, but in, in particular here in Iowa, you know, you got smaller hills, smaller valleys, and so on and so forth. And so, I thought, you know, it's bumpy, it's not exactly smooth, but it's rolling, and anyways, you know, I gave this answer, and all the kids were laughing at me, and the teacher uh, stuck up for me and corrected me and said, no, it's a, it's a planet or a globe or whatever she said, uh, whatever, so I just, I just sort of sank down on my seat and shut up for the rest of, um, my career as a student. So anyways, just reflecting on those moments. Alright, and I thought, well, you know what? Uh, this is all connected to a conversation that I was having on Facebook with a gentleman that was an atheist against the Bible. And he tried to make fun of me for believing in the Bible and I was making fun of him for believing he was a super monkey and you know I would share images of a monkey wearing a cape and he I think he really got mad he got upset about that and I thought good good it's good to get mad once in a while right so anyways so I'm considering all this and I'm thinking well you know if you know, it's worth looking into, if nothing else. And so, one day I woke up, and I'm making coffee, and this uh, verse comes into my mind. And I'm thinking, wait a second, what's, what is this verse that I'm thinking of? And so I go and I look it up. Right there it is. Psalm 19, verse 6. His going forth is from the end of heaven in a circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. That's the verse that came to my mind when I woke up and I made coffee. I had to go look it up. And there it is. I found it. His going forth is from the end of heaven in a circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Speaking of the sun. Now think about that. His going forth is from one end, or the end of heaven. Well, Albert Einstein says that there is no end to heaven. He says heaven is infinite. It goes on forever and ever. So if it goes on forever and ever, there is no end. And this Bible's wrong. And God is a liar, and Albert Einstein is the smartest man in the world. <clears throat> well, no. No, 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 no. What did Albert Einstein ever do that was useful for society in any way whatsoever? And the answer is absolutely nothing at all. Nothing he ever taught, nothing he ever said was for any good whatsoever. Now, God, on the other hand, has created us all and given us an opportunity and an escape out of this wicked world into a world of everlasting life, everlasting peace. All right, so, I mean, consider what God says. Don't consider what Albert Einstein ever said. Really? Okay, so anyways. The point is the sun um, goes to the ends of the earth, heaven, right? The ends of the heaven. So 
the heaven has an end and the sun has a circuit now consider that the sun has a circuit well if the sun has a circuit that would mean the earth is not going in a circuit around the sun but instead the sun has a circuit above us going from one end of heaven to the other and there's nothing hid from the heat thereof now this is important because if that's not true then you can't trust nothing in the Bible and we've been lied to by man for so long about so many things I'm not gonna put my trust in man anymore I'm gonna put my trust in the Word of God and so that gave me a passion to do these uh, word searches and so like for example the word heaven all right so what I did is I just went through every single mention of the word heaven and I wanted to make sure I understood the context of every mention all right so let's go down here let's just say oh that's too easy uh, let's uh, let's pretend like okay we don't know what's this mean I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and I will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Well, what's that mean in the context of this verse? All right, this is a bad example, but there are many examples that we could look at. And so I would go and I would read that chapter so that I understood the context of this mention of the word heaven. All right, and so I would do this for, I don't, I don't know, I think it was two days of, intense study you know like 12 to 16 hours I just did that's all I did all day just went through and and read every mention of the word heaven and then I I would do it uh, a search for the word earth just to you know I'm looking to make sure I understand the context of every mention now with all that in mind I'm wondering okay is there anything here that says that the earth is a ball or earth is a planet or earth is a globe or anything like that because to go back to the the, conversa the conversations I was having with this atheist who I called a super monkey uh, affectionately of course he didn't find it so affectionate but whatever alright so he would uh, he said that well the Bible teaches a flat earth and called me dumb you know what the why you can't trust the Bible and so I would you know I couldn't find any verse so I didn't find anything at all to support that you know we go to Isaiah um, oh, not what is it Isaiah, it's not Isaiah 14 it's Isaiah is it Isaiah 20 22 I forget what it says. Is a circle of earth? Isaiah 40, 22. Thank you. All right, there we go. It is he that sits upon the circle of the earth. Well, that's not technically, that's not saying the earth is a ball. It's not saying the earth is a globe. And it certainly doesn't say, it doesn't support the idea of, um, you know, the earth um, circling the sun. Or it, it doesn't support heliocentrism at all. All right. Now, you could look at this a couple of ways, you know, the earth is a ball and so somehow that has to fit or you could say well he sits above the circle of the earth or upon the circle of the earth well if you're up at the center up in the air and you look around about you could look at it that way it has nothing at all to do with this idea of a planet earth or a ball earth none whatsoever you're just 
He sits upon the circle, the whole earth. Nothing at all to do with, nothing at all. And you, you look at this and examine it and ponder it, and put some thought into it. And you realize this does not support a ball earth. And so that, you know, that's sort of also what led me to examine every single verse that might be relevant to this particular topic. All right. Uh, just for fun, let's see what the Bible says about outer space. Nothing. All right. So we can conclude. Um, beyond any doubt that when the Bible talks about heaven it's talking about outer space all right so the Bible doesn't talk about outer space so that whole idea of outer space that comes from the world not from God okay so in order to understand this we have to understand that the heaven is uh, the air in the sky right and all that sort of stuff so um, now we can go you know once I did all that and that took a while to do those two word searches for the word heaven and for the word earth it took me a while now the Sun this is a piece of cake it's only 183 mentions but um, you go through every single mention and see make sure first of all I had one to make sure I didn't want to make any mistakes I didn't want to stumble over nothing I didn't want to leave nothing to chance I got to make sure I understand every single the context of every single mention that's important and then is does this at all in any way support heliocentrism does it does it relate to this topic of the world that we live in you know Heliocentrism, geocentrism, uh, flat earth, you know. And so I disregarded everything that anybody ever taught on the subject. And I just focused on what the Bible teaches. All right, You can call it arrogance, I don't care. But I'm putting the Bible before what any man teaches. All right, And so the sun, and then of course the moon. Right, moon piece of cake. The only 62 mentions, right? And it's interesting. Yeah, I think if uh, go to uh, right here, Psalm 89, it shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Uh, to me, that that's just important because. Uh, nobody ever went to the moon and um, I could get into that I'd go in another direction if I get too far into that but the bottom line is I did all these mentions or I did all these searches right all right and so for the the word star I did a word search and uh, made sure again I understood the context of every single mention that's important because if you miss one somebody's gonna get you on it and you're gonna be set up and look like a fool again all right so this is interesting here first Corinthians 15 there's one glory of the Sun another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differ differeth from another star in glory each star in heaven is different now you think about that heliocentrism teaches that stars are suns well if the if there's one glory of the sun and another glory for the stars then they're not the same and why does this passage leave out planets all right so that you know I mean, you go and you look and you see, there's one mention of the word planets, 2 Kings 23, verse 5. And this is not a positive mention, this is a negative mention, alright, because it's a warning. 
not to go after them that do such things. All right. So this is not at all a confirmation that there are planets. Instead, this is a warning against those who, um, you know, worship such things, right? So, uh, you know, there's just nothing at all to support heliocentrism. Nothing at all. You go through all these verses, and I'm going to work backwards here a little bit. Okay, so you go here to, you know, uh, you know, this one right here, all alone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Matthew 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. The stars falling from heaven, if they're suns, that's trouble. That's big trouble. Right? Uh, Revelation 9 the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth. Unto the earth. So if stars, one star, one sun falls on the earth, that's big trouble. Big, big trouble. Well, the earth, the the world is is headed for big trouble. Regardless, all right. And there's no question about that. But it's just, it's inconsistent. And it doesn't make sense to say all those stars are suns. They can't be. Yeah, I just showed you the verse in 1 Corinthians. That each star has its own glory. And each star is different than the sun. Therefore, each star is not the sun. And that each star is not a sun at all. And if the stars fall were suns and they fell on the earth, that would be ridiculous. It's just it's a ridiculous scenario. It's overkill, right? Because you know the sun is what a hundred times bigger than the earth, or whatever, according to the liars, and that's what they are: liars, deceivers, men that hate God, reprobates. All right, the so-called scientists and the so-called experts. I mean, they're all basing this idea of heliocentrism on something that was introduced 500 years ago. All right, that that's another issue. This is modern belief. This is not a long-held belief since the beginning of time. And there's serious issues with it. And, you know, the thing that's really uh, concerning, uh, what was concerning to me in particular 10 years ago is that nobody's challenging these guys on this. That's a problem. You know, you, you think about your belief, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're challenged on it all the time, every day, constantly, nonstop. But this idea of heliocentrism, it, it's not being challenged. It, that's a problem. Because it should be challenged. And so, okay, so now it's being challenged, all right? So that's good. And I'm glad that people are, um, you know, at the very least challenging the this because if heliocentrism is true then the Bible is wrong and Jesus is a fraud and we're all destined to hell we're all gonna die and there is no everlasting life that, and that's a trouble that's a problem right I just I can't accept that I cannot accept what men say and I can only put my trust in God. There's an interesting verse here, Romans 3, God forbid, yeah, let God be true. But every man a liar. All right. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Okay, so imagine everybody in the world's wrong, but what you believe is true, because that's what God says. You know, 
you're that's fine that's fine because uh, popularity or oh you know majority opinion does not determine truth it doesn't and wouldn't it make sense that if the world's coming to an end it's because the whole world's being deceived and if the whole world's being deceived then wouldn't that mean the popular opinion is wrong I mean doesn't this all start to make sense why the whole world is under deception the whatever the popular view is it's wrong you know I mean doesn't that make sense isn't that the way it should be if we're getting close to the end of the world as so many believe if we are truly close to the very end wouldn't that mean all the popular views all around the world they're all wrong it's only the the minority view that lines up squarely with scripture that's the truth and we can see it plainly in the Bible yet all these people that are teaching supposedly about the Bible when they teach one thing and the Bible says another thing well they're wrong and the Bible is right now of course there is a big big problem in the world when people will read like a verse like this God forbid yeah let God be true but every man a liar and then they say well you gotta go back to the Greek and the Greek says the devil so I said let the devil be true and every man in the Greek word that man means me and so you know let the devil be tree or not <laughs> you know what I mean come on man really you can't believe what you read right here well the Hebrew for God forbid means uh, jumble jacks all right so jumble jacks I mean really that's not that, so that's wrong and your interpretation of Hebrew is right and so I gotta believe in you I can't believe the Bible I hold in my hands is that what you're saying that's a that's what it seems like to me anytime anybody points to a Hebrew or Greek or you know Chinese or Mexican or you know uh, Australian well the Australian says this word here means jelly pops okay well you know what I'm gonna stick with what the Bible says really I don't believe you I, I believe the Bible I hold in my hands right I mean isn't that the world that we're living in now I mean how many times have you seen somebody say well the Greek says that this board right here means poopy doop you know or whatever yeah I don't even know I mean it might as well say poopy doop because I don't understand a single word in Greek I don't understand a single word in Hebrew are you telling me I can't know God because I don't know these dead languages isn't that the same thing I mean that is the same thing that the Muslims taught me or told me uh, you know back in 2002 that's what they told me he said you can't I said well what about this verse in the Quran you know the surah uh, chapter 2 verse 191 well how do you explain that I mean how do you justify that so they well you can't interpret it in the English you have to go back to the original Arabic it's impossible to translate it into the English I so you got to be out of your cotton picking mind you're telling me because I'm because I speak English I'm damned really that's that's what it is man so you're telling me that because I don't speak ancient Hebrew I'm damned I'm condemned I'm cursed because I don't speak that language hey, only God speaks that language and you, you, you I gotta trust people who pretend to speak that language but they don't you know and the same for the Koine Greek I mean really what's the point of 
knowing Koine Greek if you don't know the ancient Hebrew. It's all nonsense. You're telling me God can't speak English? Right? So, I mean, this all, this all comes together, really. The whole thing. The whole thing comes together. And when you cut away all the BS, and you go back to Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You go outside, and what do you see? Heaven above and earth below. To go beyond that is to go beyond the Bible. And it's right there, the very first verse of the Bible. The earth is flat. Heaven above, earth below. That's it. That's all you need. 